The more gratefully we fix our minds on the supreme when good things come to us, the more good things we will receive, and the more rapidly they will come. And the reason simply is that the mental attitude of gratitude draws the mind into closer touch with the source from which the blessings come. And this is a follow-up to last week. This is a quote from Wallace D. Waddles, The Science of Getting Rich. So stay with me for today's episode where we'll talk about the science behind gratitude and how you can develop an attitude of gratitude. The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Rat Race Reboot. I'm your host, Laura Noel. And as a certified coach and former 27-year military leader, each week I provide bite-sized mindset pivots that will help you reset your mind, reawaken your spirit, and regain your control. Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to Rat Race Reboot. Today, we're talking all about gratitude, and gratitude helps you see the good in all things, and it it helps you kind of anchor that positive feeling into your mind and into your body so that when times get tough, you have some reserves to tap into that you can draw from and you can gracefully overcome those challenges or obstacles. And the word gratitude and the notion of gratitude reminds me of a story that Bob Proctor and Sandy Gallagher were sharing. And this is Sandy's story, but Sandy Gallagher was going through a difficult time in her personal life, and she was in the midst of transitioning from her role as a lawyer to working at the Proctor Gallagher Institute as the CEO. And she had breakfast with Bob one day at at a conference, and she said, give me three things that I can implement right now that will have the greatest impact on my life. And those three things that Bob told her were, one... Every single day, write 10 things that you're grateful for. Um, send love to three people who annoy you. And, and then sit quietly and ask for guidance for the day. So let's talk about those three things. 10 things to be grateful for. Now, if I were to ask you to grab a journal and every day write down 10 things that you're grateful for, I can tell you from personal experience At first, I was having trouble with that. Sometimes people have trouble finding things that they're grateful for, but through that practice and the repetition of pushing through this exercise, you'll start to see more things to be grateful for. So maybe if you try this exercise, maybe you come up with one or two things and that's okay. And then the next day, maybe you come up with three or four things. And the more you practice, the more likely you will see things to be grateful for. The other thing is when I started this practice, and I, a lot of clients that I work with, they would write down some seemingly superficial things, like I had a great cup of coffee, or um, I, I did a great job doing my makeup today, whatever that is, my hair looks good today, whatever it is, but that's okay too, you know. Because when you get into that practice, then the more you do it, the more deeply you'll get with your ideas and things to be grateful for. So that was the first thing, sending love to three people who annoy you. So that's not always an easy thing. Now, in the circumstance, and I'm not sharing sharing with you something that Sandy hasn't shared on stage, but she was going through a a difficult um, breakup. And it was pretty, pretty bad. And so she kept bringing her ex-husband to mind. And she, she said, instead of seeing, like sending him love and feeling love, whenever I would bring him to my mind's eyes, I would see daggers. So what she did, and I thought this was beautiful, is she had a, um, a lab and his name was Bear. And so he would put his paws up on her shoulders and like almost give her a bear hug. And I love this story because she would think of Bear in her mind's eye, and then she would let that image morph into the ex-husband. And she was coming from a place of love. So that's even for a split second sending love in that moment. 
It was difficult, but the more she did it, the more practice she had with doing it, the better she became with it. And actually, that was really freeing. And we're going to talk about why that is in a few seconds. And then sitting quietly and asking for guidance for the day. If you've been listening to Rat Race Reboot, we do that. We end every podcast, every episode with you know, getting in, in harmony with our wish and our desires and then asking for guidance for the day and then taking inspired action. So this could be a part of your daily practice. So remember, if gratitude is a practice and we've talked about in previous episodes about your brain and how it's wired and the reticular activating system, which is the filtration system for your brain. We're taking in so much information at any given moment. We can't humanly process all of that information. We're only processing a small fraction of it. And your reticular activating system, your RAS, is filtering information as it comes in. It's binary in nature. So when something comes in, it's saying familiar, unfamiliar, familiar, unfamiliar. It's looking for a match for what you say is important. It's also looking for a match for what you already know, basically what you believe is true. So if you're thinking, you know, if you're seeing the, half, the glass is half empty and <clears throat> you're finding that you're having trouble finding things to be grateful for, your RAS, your reticular activating system is going to show you more evidence of that. And so that's why if you practice gratitude, you'll start to see more reasons to feel grateful and you'll start to see more solutions to some of the obstacles and challenges that you have yet to overcome. And we're always going to have obstacles and challenges whenever we're growing. It's not just a cakewalk. So that, that's what I mean. It's that gratitude helps you tap into reserves that you didn't even know you had. And you're building that, that cash up for yourself so you can dip in at any time. So here's a couple of other interesting things too. Science shows that gratitude can uh, increase neurochemicals in the brain and body. I love that. So when we're thinking from negative to positive, there's feel-good chemicals in your body, the dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin. And all of these chemicals relate to feelings of closeness and connection and feelings of happiness, all of those things that come with gratitude. But we have to consistently practice gratitude. It can't be a once and done. So here's the cool thing is we know the brain can change with experience and with practice. So the more that gratitude is practiced, the more the brain learns and the more that it can tune into positive things in the world and in your life. That's how, remember, the RAS works. And studies show that focusing on an experience for 20 seconds is enough to create a positive structural change in your brain. And guess what? That's your point of attraction. We're talking about the law of attraction. There's a science and psychology behind this. So there's so many reasons why you want to practice gratitude. It will shift everything for you. So here are three things that you can do now. You can start doing this right here and now today. First is get a journal if you don't have one already. And, you know, you don't have to necessarily do what Bob asked Sandy to do, although I might do that because he knows what he's talking about. So does Sandy. But keep a journal and start here. Write down three things that you're grateful for uh, first thing in the morning and right before you go to bed. So that way you're setting yourself up for success during the day before you've had a chance to get bombarded with emails or anything like that or the news. You're in a good mental state to start your day. You are in control of you no matter <laughs> what happens. And then before you go to bed, doing that again is so important because when you go to sleep, you're focused on something positive. Again, you're changing, you're rewiring your brain. And when you're going to sleep, consciously you're not thinking thoughts, but on a subconscious level, you are. So you're, you're embedding those good feelings and those positive thoughts in your subconscious mind, which is what sets up your energy, your point of attraction. Feeling is the conscious awareness of the vibration and energy that you're in. So when you do that, you'll find that you'll wake up in a much more positive state. Um, and then incorporate this short practice that we're going to do right here and right now into your morning routine. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to take you through this practice that um, Bob had Sandy go through. And it's something that I do every single day. 
And so do this to the best of your ability. We're going to get some music started in the background. And right now, I just want you to get comfortable, relax, take a deep inhale through your nose, hold it, and exhale fully and completely. Take another inhale through your nose. And exhaling, releasing any signs of tension, anything that is no longer serving you from the day. Let it go. And take one more deep inhale. And exhaling, releasing everything that is no longer serving you. Be here and be now. And see if you can come up with 10 things that you're grateful for. Challenge yourself. Maybe that's easy for you. Take it a step further. Feel the gratitude of what you're writing down. So I don't want you to just write down things. If you're grateful for this stinking amazing cup of coffee that you made this morning or somebody got for you, what did it feel like when you were holding that cup of coffee, taking that first sip? Transport yourself into the feeling. That's where you shift your energy. And now I want you to give this a try. Send love to three people who are just dangling from your last nerve. Might not be easy, but give it a shot. Bring them to your mind's eye and energetically send them love, healing. Send it from your heart. And if you're having trouble, bring something to your mind that brings you joy right now. And then allow that image and that feeling to morph into that person, even if it's just for a couple seconds. And then just sit quietly asking for guidance for the day. How can you see things to be grateful for in each and every moment? How can you be more grateful today? Welcome back. I hope that was a powerful experience for you. And it's going to take practice if it's something that you're not accustomed to. I'm really grateful that you joined us today on Rat Race Reboot. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please go to ratracereboot.com. Um, follow us on whatever channels you listen to podcasts on. And be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. We have a, a free download there for you. But you'll know when podcast episodes are being released. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, leave a review. That's how the algorithms work, and that's how more people can be reached by this message. And I do read those reviews. So thank you in advance for a wonderful review. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And remember, everything is created twice, first in your mind and then in physical form. We'll see you next week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.